We are video editors and we love to show off. Well, that's a good thing because the more you can show, the more clients come your way. Today, we're gonna learn a few awesome editing tricks that will sharpen your editing skills. Number one, creating an RGB color effect. This right here is my Nerf gun that I can't use because I live in an apartment. Anyway, I created this cool speed wrap, which I'm gonna explain you later. First, we're gonna make the orange color RGB. Unfortunately, you can't animate the hue versus hue curve. Otherwise, this would have been very easy. Instead, go to the project panel and click the new item button. Then choose adjust layer. Drag it on top of your clip. Now head over to Lumetri Color. Then expand the Curves tab. Now scroll down until you find the Hue versus Hue tab. Now click the color picker and in the program monitor click on the color you want to change, which is in my case orange. Then go back and as you can see Premiere made a selection. If you drag this middle point up or down the color will change. You can always tweak the selection to your liking. I really love green. Now next go back to the timeline and on the adjustment layer hold down control and click to create an opacity keyframe. Do this at the beginning, at the middle and at the end. Now drag down the middle one and as you can see the color is now changing already. Now to make it look even cooler add a cut in the middle of the adjustment layer. Then select the second part and go back to Lumetri. Now change the hue versus hue curve to another color and as you can see this looks Awesome. Now, trick number two, speed ramping. Showing that you can speed ramp as a video editor gives you a huge advantage. So everyone can do this. First, grab your favorite toy, in my case, a Nerf gun, and hang it with some ropes. That way it will look like it's floating. Make sure it's in a dark room and have one key light. This can be a flashlight, anything. Then film your object going from one direction to another. I'm going clockwise. Make multiple shots like this from different angles. These are my two favorite shots. I rotoscope them in After Effects to give it the illusion like they're floating in space. But you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Once you have your clips, right click the Effects button and click Time Remapping. Then choose Speed. Do this for the other clip as well. We do have one problem. The clips don't flow into each other because the movement isn't right. Now I did this on purpose and I'll show you how to fix that in a second. Alright, this line represents the speed of the clip. The higher you drag it, the faster it goes. Just like with the Opacity line, you can add keyframes to the speed line as well. So hold down control and click on the line. Now we want the clip to start fast and then slow down. So we're gonna drag the left side up first. Now to ease the animation, pull the keyframes apart from each other. In the middle you'll find a lever. If you pull this you will ease the animation even more. Kinda like with keyframes. Next we're gonna drag the second clip out of the way for a moment. Then hold down Alt and duplicate the first clip next to it. Now right click the duplicate and choose speed and duration. In this panel click the reverse button. Now make sure they're snapped against each other and now they will flow perfectly into each other. This also fixed the camera direction which means this clip will now flow perfectly into the next one. And of course on the next clip create the same speed curve as the first one and there you go. That looks wonderful. By the way I'm working on a speed ramp tutorial on how to do this with a car in After Effects so stay tuned for that. And now a word from GoLogin, the sponsor of today's video. Now for us video editors there's nothing more important than and online privacy. The internet today isn't as open as simple as it used to be. Some content is restricted by location. A lot of websites track every move you make and they make it impossible for you to manage multiple online accounts. With GoLogin all of that changes. With their browser you can browse privately, access geo-blocked content or securely manage multiple accounts. It will give you full control of your online identity. GoLogin isn't just about privacy, it's about freedom, security and control over your online experience. Now what makes it different from regular browsers is that first of all you can unblock any content like restricted sites, streaming platforms or services and you'll have full digital privacy. GoLogin completely stops websites from tracking you. You'll have multi-account management which means you can easily switch between different profiles for work, social media or business. And what I love is that you can share your accounts with your team without sharing passwords. Go Login hides more than just your location, it protects your entire online identity. No tracking, no IP bans. You will also get 2 gigabytes of free residential proxies which gives you fast and secure access to content worldwide. If you want privacy, security and complete online freedom, GoLogin is the tool you need. You can try it for free by clicking the link down below. It's time for number 3, tracking. For this it's better to use After Effects and since you guys have been asking for it, 
I deliver. So once After Effects is open, click the new Composition button. A composition is kind of like a sequence in Premiere. Choose your desired resolution, for example 4K, and then for the frames I'm gonna go with 30fps. Then click on OK. Now drag your footage into the project panel and from here you can drag them into the timeline. Or you can just drag them into the timeline directly. Now right click in the timeline and go to New. Then click Null Object. This is gonna be an empty layer that's gonna hold our tracking data. Select it and hit Enter to rename it. Call it tracking data or something. Now select the car video and head over to the tracker panel. Then click on track motion. This will open up the layer panel. If you scroll to zoom in, you'll see this little tracking point. Grab it and drop it somewhere on an object in your video that's easy to see. For example, the tail light of the first car. This can also be a high contrast area somewhere on your object. With the inside box, you basically select the area that After Effects has to track. Make sure the entire tail light or object fits in it. But keep it tightly. The outside box works a little different. Instead of looking for my tail light on the entire video, After Effects will only look for the tail light inside this box. So the bigger you make this, the slower it will work. Once you're ready, hit the track forward button. You might need to hit the stop button and manually track it if it's too difficult for After Effects. Now, of course, this means you have to remove the faulty tracking points. To do that, go to the cars clip in the timeline and expand the properties. Then expand the track point property. And here, simply Simply select and remove all the keyframes from the moment the tracking went wrong. Then go back to the tracker panel and hit the one frame forward button. This will track your tail light, but only for one frame. That way you can manually adjust it and track it. Do that for just a few frames until the hard part is done. Now click the play button again and there you go. Alright, that was the most difficult part. Next, click the edit target button and in this panel, make sure the tracking point layer is selected. Then hit OK. Next, hit on apply and then again on OK. Now the tracking data is sent to the null object, which is super awesome. Now the next step is creating a line. To do that, right click in the timeline and choose new solid. Doesn't matter what color it is. Once it's there, go to the effects panel and find the beam effect. Then drag it on the solid. Awesome. Now head over to the effect controls. The first thing you want to do is set the length to 100%. Then set both the inside and the outside color to white or whatever color you prefer. Decrease the softness and increase the starting and ending thickness. And now it's time to pin the line to the car. Click the starting point and in the composition panel you can now pin it to the tail light of your car. You can put the ending point wherever you like. Now expand the solid properties then effects and then beam. We're gonna need the starting point in just a second. First expand the transform properties of the tracking point. You know the null object we created earlier. Then go up again next to the starting point click and hold the pick whip tool which is this little spirally thingy and drag it all the way down to the position property of the null object. This will make sure the starting point will stay on the tail light. Now on the other side of the line, you can type some text or add a picture, whatever you want. I added a picture of my face. Now just for practice, expand the properties of your object, or in my case my face. And this time click the pick whip tool from the beam layer next to the ending point. Then drag it to the position property of my face. You can now animate your face and the ending point of the line will stay on your face. Super super cool. Trick number four is using an EQ and compression to make your speech sound super professional. And to do that, click the video right here on my left. Thank you guys so much for watching.